where she walks, there's almost like a, a five to ten second period where grass seems to grow and kind of leave just the faint image of where she walks behind, uh, this uh, little uh, touch of nature just uh, kind of uh, blooming in her wake. I am on the verge of tears right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all have different, you know, come from different walks of life. I myself am a master craftsman, uh, Jenny Pockapi, C-Pop Industries. Um, Fern here is a bit of a, you know, jack of all trades. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I do lots of, lots of, Lots of so many things. I can sense the odd fey nature around you with but a glance. Well, thank you. She's yeah. really good with um, <laughs> uh, animals and stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too, actually. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, <clears throat> keeps walking a bit. I don't think I've ever met an automaton with so much personality. Oh, uh, I get that a lot. It's because I was uh, uh, I was created as an ancient killer uh, a thousand years ago, uh, an assassin um, by a, by a by a long gone uh, land or, or uh, civilization. But I forgot all that, and now I'm just trying to be helpful. Well, I'm I'm happy to hear that you've chosen a different path. Uh, you know, uh, redemption is often a, a wonderful aspiration. I agree. Um, are you a are you a holy person at all, or? I have a tangled relationship with the gods, you could say. Oh. Um, Are they trustworthy, or? Some may be, but I tend to be more of a believer in the world we call home. How can you tell which ones to trust? Sometimes you have to meet them. You've met the gods? A few. He keeps walking. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, I'm feeling in over my depth. I feel like we're really in over our depth. This is a lot. I knew it was going to be a lot. This is a lot. Orb, she knows the gods. Some of them. Holy fuck, man. We met in the city of Drasar, mostly through circumstance. <laughs> it was a happy accident. You might have known the man who brought us together, Bertrand Bill? That fuck. <laughs> I've learned a, a decent amount of what you sent me to learn, uh, but I wouldn't have done it without any of them. Uh, your your name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Ash, Ashton. Hi. Ashton. Keila. Yeah. Hi. Um, thank you so much, and good luck with your uh, your rogue faction. Thank you, uh, and good luck with your not murdering people. Uh, it's been, I think, <clears throat> six days since uh, I've tried to murder. That's soon. Really that's really well. soon. I Going thought that really was well. further back. That's yeah. this is a recent change. Well, okay. I mean, one day at a time. One day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I, I should not judge. When we were attacked in Zephra, the assassins utilized a particular kind of toxin, a venom that is extremely rare. It is designed intentionally to lock away divine magics to prevent resuscitation. It's extremely expensive, and I hate to think what their plans were. It looks to be a large meeting chamber, a dual set of stained glass windows on the opposite side of the room that together form the sun oh, tree in autumn colors. This is Derulo we're talking about. It's true. It's true. It's been busy for 30 years. Uh, it's been making me robot. Robot. <laughs> <laughs> robot. Wow. Well, Next campaign's going to get real well, weird, y'all. Now he is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's go. And I'll form the head. <laughs> All righty. Standing beyond the desk. Facing away from you, looking up at the mask. Bed head unkept, kind of white hair. A dark blue and gray <laughs> robe, like a day coat that hangs past the back of the knees. The figure turns around and you can see the bespectacled face. Somewhat unshaven, rough looking beard of a person who's been busy and not really keeping to their more refined and well kept exterior. Well, welcome. I am Lord Percival Frederick Stein von Musel Koloski de Rollo III, architect of enlightened progress of the Chamber of Whitestone. Who are you and what do you need? Suddenly Percival, as you say that, looks past you and goes, <laughs> Darling, I told you not to do that. And uh, behind you, you can glance and see slipping into the door what looks to be a young girl uh, in a pale blue dress, deep red skin, and these horns that curl up from the middle of the head through dark hair. 
holding what looks to be a small doll in one arm. Sorry, Father. I was just curious who these strangers were with Keyleth. Kind of smiles for a second. Well, at the very least, uh, I would wish that you have a seat in the corner and read a book or something. Maybe you'll learn something. Pay attention. You see him smile. This, this kind of hard, honestly intimidating exterior melting away for a moment with a bit of warmth. Have you ever incorporated um, mechanisms? Mechanisms? Why, what mechanisms, mechanisms would you be speaking of? All sorts of kinds, whether they be gear-based locking mechanisms, uh, uh. plate tricks. Um, uh. <coughs> he does right? in metalworking. <coughs> <coughs> He's very old, he could go in any second. This is a piece of jewelry that he made just out of nowhere. Oh, just... well, that is tangled. <gasps> well, that's my fault. <coughs> But today could be the day. Mm. Well, Constitution saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> Is Katha full in the sky right now? <laughs> now, mechanisms, of course, always have opportunity to be incorporated into work, but I, I like to try and keep things as original to their original mediums. Jogging awesome. up the, uh, the path that leads to the castle, a couple guards trying to keep up. Um, you see a uh, a short gnomish woman um, of white hair that's kind of uh, pulled back into a messy bun that's kind of falling apart as she runs, and bits of it are kind of tangled behind. Wearing this like uh, bright yellow sun blouse that kind of uh, drifts into a white apron, uh, and she's got she's a little little chubby around the face, and these kind of meaty arms as she kind of charges up quickly. And she says, "Percy." Percy! <laughs> you see the Lord kind of. Yes, Pike? <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? No decorum. He kind of just oh, runs in. Uh, the guards kind of step out of the way. Looks up. It's early. You don't normally call me to the castle. I'm a little confused. Hi. 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 Oh, greetings. Hello. I'm Pike. Fresh cut grass. Ashton. Hi, Hi I'm, I'm, I'm Imogen Temold. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh. Hi, hey, Miss Trickfoot. My name is Orem. It's really formal. <laughs> what do you do around here? I bake. Name oh, baker. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I don't do baker? as much as I used to. We, we have a lot of people running it now. We have what? a shop. Down. It's called the Slayer's Cake. It's a little ways into the city there. Oh. Um, I'm more of a manager at this point, but you know, I still like to get there. They seek the restoration of a fallen friend. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> oh. so casual. Um, <laughs> it's it's been a little bit. Pike, you see, like pulls from the blouse uh, yeah. a chain that dangles, and there at the base of it, you see what looks to be a a, a golden symbol that resembles these like flaming angelic wings. What's that? <laughs> oh, this is oh, just no. a symbol of my... Steelers. No. 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 Well, I, uh, <clears throat> I have a friend who's also a god, and this is what I used to talk to her. How many people know you gods in this town? Have you talked to gods? Have you talked to, talk to gods, gods too? Well, I mean, anyone can talk to a god. You just have to go and pray at a temple. Oh, oh, oh. oh that doesn't sound as exciting. Lady Keyleth made but it sound like. But I have actually like... talked to her. <gasps> so what? Oh, anyway, my God. Um, that's a long time ago. I'm just a baker now. Wait, a so baker that can bring someone back to life. Well, I didn't make any promises. She died in the tree, and then she was brought back. Lord Percival goes. She was on the sun tree, Pike. Oh. And you hear a voice from the stairs above. Oh. You see, just having stepped down the spiral staircase to the left where she had previously vanished, Lady Vexalia, kind of frozen, looking down. Percy, was this. Was. It was you. She was. You. She quickly steps down the staircase next to Pike and kind of leans down, looks back up at Percy. We have to help them. We did this to her. You? You did. 
Well, we have the reason she was on that tree to begin with. Pike, can you? Pike goes, I, I, I don't know, how long, how long has she been, how long has she been gone? There's, there's windows of time. Six days. Six, seven days. Six days, six days, okay. Uh, and I, I cast a spell on her to sort of keep her body pure. Okay. Uh, but just so you know what you're working with here, well, she was different from some of us. Sure, when, when, when she came back to life, she was not quite alive, not quite dead. I kind of looks up at Vexalia and you hear Lord Percival go, <sighs> it seems her corruption endures. And Pike goes, uh, I mean, yeah, I can, let me, I'm pretty sure I have, do you know what I need? Can I get like a few? Looks over at Vex, goes, Diamonds, yes, I'll be right back. And she shakes out her pockets. <laughs> right. Walks off. Uh, she says, uh, in, in, in the meantime, uh, let's. Sorry. And she grabs like the big carpet in the middle to make an entryway and kind of pulls it aside and it just kind of bunches in the right corner. Here. And Percival's like, <sighs> pulls her symbol forward and begins marking these kind of loops with looks to be like ash or sage and the scents of uh, various herbs begin to kind of fill the air around and you watch as she kind of draws this very loose kind of circular sigil around the body of Ladna. Pike now holding this a little further, begins like reciting some words, whispering to herself a bit. We're good, don't worry, I, I, I totally have this. It's all fine. Or, or I'm Vex! <sighs> Pike, my dear, here. Hands are, looks to be a cluster of four diamonds of different sizes. They're affixed to other pieces of jewelry. And she takes them. Uh, I trust your eye. Uh, <laughs> takes them and holds them in her hand and just closes her eyes. A moment passes in silence. Another moment. And you can hear the ever so faint sound of is it an incantation? Is it a prayer? You're uncertain. But the. The drawn out time, the lack of response of anything begins to build up an anxiety and a fear in you. And then Pike goes, oh, no, it, <laughs> it's a B, not a C, sorry. She speaks an incantation. <laughs> the ground and the sigil around Londa immediately lights up in this bright, vibrant, golden hue. The entire chamber now is just a light with sparkles and energies. <laughs> A gentle wind out of nowhere begins to whip around, and you feel your hair tossing around those whose hair can move. Um, <laughs> you see as Lord Darrell kind of takes a step back and takes a deep breath. Vexalia kind of comes up to his side and holds his arm. And Pike now closes her eyes once more, clutches her holy symbol, and now muttering under her breath, opens her eyes once more, and where you once saw pupils, you now see a bright golden light to match the color of the sigils just beaming from her face reaches out and places her other hand on the chest of Ladna's cold body. As she does, you see the body begin to shift and lift, drawn from the chest, the arms and legs kind of limp and being left by gravity to sag as the torso begins to be carried up off the ground where Pike's hand almost lifts her. I can feel her soul. It's adrift. Not yet beyond our reach. That's good, that's good. What is, there's something else here. There's something, I'm trying to reach for her, but it's holding her back, it, I can't, uh, Percy? And she pulls her hand back, and all the light vanishes, Ladna oh. hits the ground, and per, and you watch as Pike kind of like sits back a bit, her hand still out in front. Percy, there's two souls bound to this body, and I can't separate them, not like this. Percy steps forward. Two souls? Yeah. And one of them is Delilah Briarwood. And we're gonna go to break. Oh! It's an early, oh, it's an early, oh, it's an early break. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 it's too much. Oh, we just gotta save the day. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's uh, make some space here, and she begins to. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've sat next to her, that's true. Yeah, that's, true. that's all. <laughs> <laughs>
You give it a fine punch? I'll give it a fine punch. <laughs> fine. Roll a strength check. <clears throat> this is what happens when barbarians get born. That's not a d20. <laughs> <laughs> That's not eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. What'd you get? One. <laughs> oh, no way. And right at that moment, you also hear. Oh. You glance over to your right, and kind of right off to the side, but you didn't notice, there's a small furred creature that is looks grayed in a lot of its fur. You see uh, light bits of armor across its back, and it looks to be uh, Two other adult brown bears. These are bears, kind of curled up and waking to the side. The older one, kind of going. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey. Mm. Just collapses back down into a nap. The other bear is kind of paying attention to you. Done. The larger one is still resting, the other two large ones kind of start moving into a defensive position. Hey. I'm gonna kneel down. Make an animal handling check. All right. The one on the left. <laughs> just kind of backs into a sitting position. The other one is still kind of half rested, and the the older kind of larger one and still kind of curled up with one eye open, kind of lazily paying attention to you. This is an ancient bear. Mm. It must be nice having people just do what you need them to by growling at them and having them not expect you to have to explain yourself. I'm jealous. He's an asshole. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure he's fine for you, but you should you do me a favor? <laughs> If you're ever feeling it, shit somewhere inappropriate and think of me. You're a nice bear. <laughs> I get up. <laughs> you walk away. Yeah. And the, the, the younger bear that's been staring at it this whole time slowly pops back down and joins the other two in a nap. <sighs> Follow this What are their names? What are their names? Hmm? You I want to know. They're, I know I'm not even there. They're, they're on the council, though. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, coming to the northwestern side of the city, there is a, a beautiful neighborhood, and there nestled, you see, on this kind of small elevated hill with a cultivated garden around it, with this beautiful little fence line, and this, this adorable cottage that is situated here, kind of surrounded by, by bushes that are unkept just enough to have kind of like a, a rustic charm and probably planted a little too close to the walls where it almost feels like it's kind of hugging or swallowing the building a bit. You can see the heavily thatched roof kind of elevates up to a point where uh, a relief of a similar symbolist, what you saw hanging around her neck, currently sits slightly uh, off kilter. Um, the building itself is covered in ivy and flowers uh, with vibrant reds and uh, kind of tan colors of the paint of the walls kind of poking through in places. It's just, it, it's, it looks a very homey space. Um, and as Pike gets out her keys, opens the door and kind of leads you all inside, she's in the process of thinking, you can see her eyes darting around, she's trying to recall where things might be. But as you walk inside, it is an extremely warm and welcoming interior that is just covered in dozens of odd knickknacks and decorations and keepsakes that add color and character to the already pleasant smells of sage and sweet nectars that permeate the air. Um, what sort of what sort of things do they see? <laughs> oh wow. So many, so many little paintings. Um, just recipe books everywhere. Uh, pictures, not pictures. Paintings of all of her friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One of those. Um, <laughs> what a happy little resurrection over here. Yeah. <laughs> Rugs everywhere. Yes, a little, a, a little fireplace going. Everything's just warm and wonderful, and almost like a little hobbit home in some ways. Yeah. As you all kind of walk in, and you can hear her small gnome footsteps, like. Boop, boop, boop. Upstairs, the sound of things kind of being shifted and 
upstairs. She's just tearing the upstairs area apart. <laughs> Play of the dawn modern. Yep. <laughs> Get the dust off of it. Shit! <laughs> Okay. Okay. Pike comes around the corner with like two books under her arm and looks like a thing of scrolls. Goes. Would you be able to tell if he has a soul or a spirit or anything like that? Or I mean, yeah. Want me to check? You can just check. It's kind of my specialty. Was my specialty. I guess it kind of is. As a baker. Yes. Bakery sounds amazing. Bakery. I know we got to go to the bakery. FCG, this is a big deal. It is. But I don't want to distract from the task at hand. It's okay. She probably just requires your meat tongue for a component. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. <laughs> Open your mouth. Shoot. Ah, there you go. Finally, it's gone. gone Finally, oh, it's no. the end. It's growing no. back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate this so much. Oh, it's, it's like not the canon. endless jug, the <laughs> alchemy jug, except it's the endless tongue meat. No. Oh, 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 it's like a toy. Toothpaste. Oh, no. it's just the peanut butter like, solution of tongue meat. Oh. No. Oh. Now I don't want it. Oh. Oh. This is huge. Oh. I know. I'm scared. I'm, I don't, maybe, I don't, maybe I don't want to know because what if it's what if it's not an answer I, I want? Okay, That's we don't a, need to do it then. Wait, Can you sorry. hold my hand? I will absolutely hold your hand if you need. <clears throat> I mean, I'm going to try. I'm just a baker. <sighs> Comes and steps up to you and kind of looks up at your, you know, you're kind of in that, that middle height area. She's a little bit shorter than you and looks up, kind of looks you over, smiles, and kind of like touches the side of your metal head. The other hand touches her symbol. She closes her eyes, and you feel this like wave of something come over you, and you feel like you're about to tumble, like your, your sense of, of upright gravity begins to shift. And then suddenly, <laughs> there is just light burning around you. There is this. This inferno of silver white light that is just blurring everything in the space around you, shifting and moving. And you look around, and there in front of you, you see the same kind of shape as Pike, but she is herself a burning silver ember of light. You see just the flames rising off of her, and this like set of fiery wings that just kind of drift in place. Where her eyes are is just this this glowing cavalcade of color and white light. And you see the symbol still there resting in the middle of her chest as she clutches it. And she looks and leans into you. Can you see me? Is that you? The, the same? Yeah. I can see you. And you see you. I'll look down at my hands. You look down, your arms, the, the shape of them, but it's just kind of like this strange semi-translucent light. Not as bright as hers necessarily, but present, this kind of fuzzy sparkle. As you kind of turn your hands over in front of you, you can see them like shifting and moving, almost like electrical pulses, but but not electricity, not, not arcane. It's hard to explain. You just feel warm. What does it mean? It means you're alive. And from the look of it, you already have eyes on you. And she points down to your chest, and you see the coin sitting in the space of your chest with the face of the Changebringer on it. You're brought back into the room. Her face is, her hand is still on your face. See, you're fine. Ting, ting. Well, maybe it's just because of the coin or something. No, FCG, it's because of you. Oh, no. What? Oh. If I have a spirit, that means I, well, I have to live. Well, yeah. Fortunate, but true. It's the idea. I've watched all of you and so many others for so long. It, it seems kind of hard. You've kind of already been doing it. Find a purpose and <laughs> and find people to depend on and and not disappoint and stuff. And that, that's a lot of. I don't understand. What's the difference between now and yesterday? Well, now it matters. It always mattered. Well, everyone has their path to take at their own speed. And if it matters now, think on that. See what it means to you. These fine folks seem to depend on you and have for a while. Just make sure you don't disappoint them by working that much harder. 
It's it's not anything incredible per se, but it's better than nothing. It is indeed magical, and if you take a moment to go ahead and fix it upon yourself, it should you know, should assure you some safer passage, hopefully. Yeah, it's a little heavier than what I'm used to, but I think I can make it work. Thank you. I'll bring it back in one piece. I think. Wonderful. I don't know you. I don't know really what's going on, but I feel like I just have to tell you he's having a day he is never going to forget right now. His mind is entirely blown. You have no idea. I have no idea. Well, uh, this is. To be perfectly honest, I'm not to brag, but I'm used to blowing minds. <laughs> I'm so happy I could. Uh, I love a brag. Continue the trend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fun. Pike, darling, do you need any help? As Pike's over there with a flask, like, oh, no, I'm good. Uh, just get ready. It's not the metal that's defining the spirit, more like the shape that would reside within is taking form. Feet? Still, kind of a kind of a, a singular Just wheel. Two little feet sticking out from where your wiener would be. T Rex, T Rex feet. Like the fucking dead, when Deadpool loses his lower half and little baby legs grow out. That's awful. Okay. Stick your tongue out. Is there one? No. Okay. There's never been one. There's no tongue. It's not canon. Your <laughs> tongue. <laughs> It just your tongue goes out and trails <laughs> up into the sky. Uh, Ladna's within ten feet of me, right? Yeah, I did that right. Or Imogen, mean? I Imogen, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I owe you a coke. Good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You tell me what you want to do. I would like to win. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's an action. Yeah. That's a reaction. <laughs> Can't I? Uh, just cast spiritual weapon so it's up and ready Sorry. when they come back. Okay, where would you like your spiritual weapon to be and what does it look like? It's the thing that Black Fabric hates the most. It's a bottle of bleach. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> There's your bottle of bleach. <laughs> Hey, you got one. <laughs> uh, more, of a, more of a Tide Pod, isn't it? Really? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's my bonus oh, yeah, action. Right. You're keeping some shit going yeah, on. Technically, yeah. greater restoration can restore accent points. Oh, but none yeah. of us have it. No, it's not taking away points from me. It's just stressing me out a little. <laughs> yeah, greater, no. greater restoration. Uh, I don't need those temporary hit points that are fucking bad. Tell us what you're feeling. Right now, well, I, I, I was here, <laughs> and I went to here. I'm like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to keep this? I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh God. I can handle the it. Greater restoration could restore the negative 18 hit points <laughs> I took to my max HP, but that would probably require a short rest. It's afterwards. also a fifth level spell. I don't have it. But nobody no has access to it. And there's like and a What are you cost. even down here for? I thought you had a <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited that I set unreasonable expectations for healers in this game. This <laughs> feels really good. 